Hello everybody and uh, welcome to my next video. Um, today I'm going to be showing you how to basically um, photograph your avatar in front of a blurred background and I'm going to be showing you how to how I do the blurred background and stuff like that because I don't use depth of field um, but how to do that without a green screen. Um, you will still need to use some screens um, and I'll show you how I you know deal with that um, but you won't have to deal with that fuzzy green edge around your avatar at all um, and this is actually a uh, method that I know a lot of people do use but at the same time a lot of people have never heard of it um, and so I'm going to be walking you through today how I do it and it's actually a fairly straightforward process there's not that many steps involved it's fairly beginner friendly especially if you're doing pictures in firestorm so yes i will place my avatar in an aesthetic location and then i'll jump right back in okay so once you have your avatar in a pose that you like um i just have mine um on a pose stand uh in a pose that i made uh that i'll probably be releasing as a group gift um sometime soon um but what you want to make sure is that your avatar is completely static so if possible no breathing poses no animations um if she has bento or animesh attachments like ears just make sure you um you know set them to static and not animated because that'll make this process a whole lot easier so first i'm going to be showing you how to do this in firestorm as you can see i'm in firestorm and basically what you want to do is you want to have your avatar set up in front of the background you like. You want to have them static and then you want to save your camera position. And the way you do that in Firestorm is you press Control shift c and that will bring up this camera tools panel. And what we're interested in is this button here which stores your current camera view. So if I press that... And then let's say I move my camera around all the way out here. If I press this button, load stored camera view, it'll take us all the way back. And this is important because if we have to move the camera around to fix things, which we will be doing um, with this method, you can just recall the camera view and it'll zoom you right back in. So now that we have our camera view stored, we can take our first picture. So to do that, I'm just going to go to snapshot and your you know configuration might be slightly different i'm going to set this to um 4k so that's width uh, if you type times two there we go i did it the wrong way round <laughs> i'm so stupid here we go there we go now i have a screenshot and I'm just using my uh, default wind light, which um, I will include as a download in the bottom of this video. Um, and then I'm just going to refresh and choose save as. And I'm going to go to... Uh, and now let's just save it in blog pics. Uh, and I will name it after the pose, Yaru, there we go, and save. And now any subsequent screenshots that we make after this will be saved in the same location. So if you want to specify where to save them, again you have to go to save as, otherwise it'll just save them there with the uh, suffix 01, 02, 03 and so on. So now that we have our first picture, uh, we have to take a couple more. And what I'm going to do is I'm now going to show you why saving the camera position was so important. Because what we're going to do is we are going to um, move the avatar out of the way to get a clear shot of the background. Now this step is optional, but I like to do it because when you blur your background, if you have your avatar on it, it'll blur the avatar with the background, obviously, because it's one compressed image. And so any flyaway hairs you have, 
and things like that will cause the um, basically the edge of the avatar to look a little bit fuzzy and it just looks very unnatural. So this step I highly recommend you do do because it can help greatly improve the realism of the photo. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to zoom out a little bit and I'm going to click on my pose stand and I am just going to drag it all the way up. Now if you have shadows on you will want to drag it down or to the side instead because otherwise you will have a shadow of the post stand cast into the scene which can be annoying um and make sure you don't log out at this point because otherwise you won't be able to press Control z um Control z to bring your avatar back down so um what you can do is you can save the axis that you're moving your avatar on just Control c copy it and then move the avatar out of the way and then you can paste it back in or you can just press Control z on your keyboard with the build mode thing uh panel <laughs> sorry open so what i'm going to do is again i'm going to recall my camera position and i'm going to go into snapshot and as you can see it's refreshed it to just the background and i'm going to save and now it will have saved this as well and now comes the magic now I'm going to put my avatar back with Control Z, or again you can just Control V, paste the position in there. Um, and now if you're happy with how those two pictures came out, you can actually delete the background, uh, which I'm going to do. And now, um, if if you're not on a sim where you have resing rights, you might want to create this before you go there, so go to your sandbox or your platform or whatever and create this prim and then put it in your inventory to take with and attach to your avatar. Um, I would suggest attaching it to your avatar center and then it becomes easier. But seeing as I'm on a, you know, skybox sim, I can just create things here. So I'm going to create um, just a basic square prim. And now under texture, you want to set it to full bright. And if you click on the texture, you want to set it to blank. These two steps are very important because our next step is going to involve a wind light that turns everything that isn't full bright black. And so if your avatar has any attachments that are full bright, it will not turn those black. So you might want to um, play around with finding out what on your avatar is full bright. And if you do have something that's full bright, turning it off. So what I'm going to do now is I'm just going to rotate this to face the camera and then I'm going to press um, control shift and it allows me to resize. I'm just going to uncheck stretch both sides and I'm just going to make it so that it covers all the way around my avatar. It's not important that it covers the whole screen because we can fix that but it really just has to be all the way around your avatar. And then when I'm happy with it, I will X out of that. And again, I will recall my camera position. And now comes the magic. Um, and again, this wind light will also be included in the description of the video as a download. Um, and what you do want to make sure is that um, under photo tools, I think, yes, you don't have um, local lights. And the same goes for Black Dragon. You will want to make sure that you don't have any local lights because this can affect things like full brightness. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to look for the wind light and I named it Blush Wind Light because my friend Blush gave it to me. <laughs> um, and I'm just going to click on it and ta-da! <laughs> and that's all there is to it. Now, obviously in Photoshop, we're going to invert this. And I'll explain a bit more about that once we get to Photoshop. But yes, for now, I'm just going to go back to Snapshot. And again, you'll see it's refreshed. And I'm going to save. And there we go. Now we have all of our pictures. Okay, so if I drag over the um, Explorer tab, you'll see I have the three pictures. Let me just open them up. You'll see in picture one, I have my avatar. In picture two, I have just the background. And in picture three, I have the special magic setup. <laughs> so um, now I'm going to switch over to Black Dragon and show you how to do this there. 
And then at the end, I will switch over to Photoshop and show you how to bring everything together. Okay, so I've changed my scene. I've changed my avatar. Um, this is my raven head avatar. <laughs> Um, I also made this skin. I'll probably also release it at some point. But yes, so um, what I want is I want to have the two contrasting avatars on like a vendor ad for the group gift. And so they're in the same pose, just mirrored. Anyway, what I've done is I've set up my wind lighting how I like it. Because again, first we're going to take the picture how we want it, just with no blur. Then we're going to do the background and then we're going to do the special white background. So what I'm going to do is I'm again going to save my position by pressing Control shift c but in Black Dragon the difference is that this directly saves your camera position. So then if I move around again, and my computer's chugging, um, and then press Control shift v as you'll see it'll recall the pose. Or alternatively you can go up here to Dragon, My Useful Features, um shortcuts and then save camera position and load camera position but that's quite a far way to go into you know these tabs so that's why i just use the keyboard shortcuts anyway so now i'm going to bring up my snapshot button here and again i'm going to set it to what is it 4k i said uh, here we go oh it wasn't 4k <laughs> anyway <laughs> Um, I'll just set it to that. Um, and again, you're going to want to go to save as. Now I've set up a save location already, but if you haven't, then just navigate through your files. Um, let me just copy the location and paste it in here. It's just fastest. There we go. And press save. And it'll take a second in Black Dragon because of the shadows, uh, but it's saved. Now I can close this, and again, you don't need to worry because we've saved the camera position. Um, so now what I'm going to do is I'm just going to move my avatar out of the way. Now again, with the shadows, I'm going to move her to the left. So I'm just going to copy this, Control c Move her out of the way, like so. Press Control shift v to zoom back in. Go to Snapshot. And again, it will have refreshed. Save to disk. And save. There we go. And now I can bring my avatar back in. And now you can actually turn off shadows. Because, as said previously, uh, you want to avoid having things like local lights on for this part. So I'm, just, uh, so I'm just going to press no shadows. And now my computer will be a lot faster. Um, and here, you'll want to uncheck render world lights, render self-attached lights, um, and render other attached lights. You will, however, want to enable Fulbright, because otherwise this won't work. So now I'm just going to edit this. Paste in the X position, recall her. Press Control Shift V to recall the position. Yes. And now I'm going to again create a prim. Or if you've got it in your inventory, then attach it to yourself. And I'm just going to stretch this out. I'll zoom out a little bit. And I'll bring it a bit closer. Now, unfortunately, I'm on an angle, so this is a bit difficult. <laughs> there we go. And now, in Black Dragon, you want to press Fulbright here. You want to go over here, click on this texture. It'll take a second because, as we know, Black Dragon is slow. Press blank. OK. And then you can close out of this. You can recall your position. And I have a Black Dragon version of my wind light, which I will also provide in the downloads below. And the silhouette wind light is the same for Black Dragon and Firestorm. So again, I'm just going to type blush and press enter. And there you go. Now, one thing to bear in mind in Black Dragon is that for some reason, the whites of the Fulbright are never fully white. So you will have to play around with levels in Photoshop, but I will also show you how to do that. 
So with this setup, I'm now going to go to snapshot, new snap, save to disk. And with that, we're done in world. So now we can jump into Photoshop and I'll show you the next steps. So now that I'm in Photoshop, I can start editing these pictures to make the backgrounds all pretty and blurry. <laughs> Um, as you can see, I've named them accordingly. This is the full version with the avatar. This is the silhouette, and this is just the background. So first I'm going to work on the first set, the Firestorm set. And I'm just going to drag in one of them, and it'll create a new canvas. And then we can go back here, and we can control click all the pictures we want. And we can just drag them into the empty space around the canvas, and it'll add them in as smart layers. So I can just press enter, enter, enter. There we go. And it'll also drag them in with the name so you know what's what. So now I can delete that picture. And now comes the magic. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to drag the silhouette layer to the top and I'm going to make all the adjustments I need. So I'm going to right click it and rasterize the layer. And I'm just going to marquee tool, select the bits that I do want to be the same color as the background. So in this case, white. Um, and I'm going to press G to go to the Fill Bucket tool. And I'm going to Alt-click on a portion of the canvas that has the colour that I want. And then I'm going to press Alt-backspace, and it'll fill those portions. Now, as you can see, there's a small stripe here where I didn't line up the white background perfectly. So to fix that, I'm just going to go in with the Lasso tool by pressing L. And I'm going to just drag this along here and press shift to add to the selection. And then again, I'm going to press alt and backspace. And now I can control D to deselect. And I've made all the modifications I want. So now I can right click, convert to smart object again so that it's lossless. And now what we want to do is we want to invert the color range. So to do this, we're going to press control I or you can come up to Image, Adjustments, uh, Invert. But again, I'm a keyboard shortcut person, so uh, yes. And now you'll see that the background is black and the avatar is white. Now, why have we done this? Um, in Photoshop, and generally sort of in software, um, when working with alpha channels, generally speaking, white equals visible, black equals invisible. And so the way we're going to make this work is we're going to use an alpha mask. And to do this, we've now inverted this. So now what we're going to do is we're going to play around with the levels as necessary. So to do this, I'm going to press Control L to bring up the levels manipulation tool. And now let's say your black isn't fully black or your white is slightly gray. What I'm going to do is I'm just going to drag these two in a little bit. And if you look at the preview, of course, here, um, because this is a Firestorm screenshot and not a Black Dragon screenshot, it's not that visible. Um, but in Black Dragon, it'll be very visible uh, with those screenshots. So I'll actually cancel this for now because in Firestorm, generally speaking, the alpha is pretty much perfect and ready to go. But in Black Dragon, it needs a lot of tweaking. So I'll show you that again when I drag those into the canvas as well. But for now, what I'm going to do is I'm going to press Control A and then Control C to copy the selection of the layer. Now I can hide this and I can go to the um, full picture, which includes the avatar and the background. And I'm going to press this button here to create a mask. And then I'm going to alt click on that mask. And now control A to select everything again and press control shift V to paste the selection into the mask. So we can control D to deselect and alt click on the layer again. And now you'll see if I hide this, there's no background. And if I zoom in, you can see that there's no green around her either because we didn't use a green screen. Um, and to further enhance this point, I'm going to add a solid color background. And you'll see that there's no fuzz around the avatar because the alpha was created using the avatar. Um, so now if I hide this and I reactivate the background, we can blur the background and it'll look pretty much perfect. Um, 
so to blur the background I'm just going to go to filter blur Gaussian blur I'm not going to blur it too much um, yeah maybe maybe 13 and a half percent yes and now if I crop the image just pressing C to sort of crop it a bit uh, oh damn it you'll see that the background is blurred and the avatar isn't and because we took a picture with no avatar in the background um, there's no weird fuzz around the avatar. It's a sharp picture with a fuzzy background. And now, um, if I convert this to a uh, smart object, I can actually rotate the avatar around in front of the background without, you know, really affecting it in any way. So yes, now I'm going to uh, export this and I will show you again using the black dragon pictures so again like before i'm going to select one of the screenshots and drag it into photoshop and it'll create a new layer and then i'm going to go back to my explorer tab and press Control and click on the other ones and it'll drag them all in as layers there we go so now as you can see um in Black Dragon, the whites aren't as white, they're slightly grey. And I will demonstrate this by making a quick white square. So, you know, you can see um, it's not properly white. And now um, it's important to play around with the levels. So first, before I do that, I'm just again going to make any fixes I need to the background by rasterizing the layer quickly, marquee selecting the area that I want to fix, Alt, uh, going to the fill bucket tool, alt clicking on an area that has the color I want, and then alt backspace to fill. And it's okay if it's not perfect, because with the levels tool we'll fix this. And then again, I'm going to convert this layer to a smart object, so it's lossless. And now what I can do is I can press Control L to bring up the levels tool, and this time I'm doing it before I invert the colors so that I can see um, in a larger surface area um, how much of the white I need to fix and again I'm just going to start dragging the black and the white in and again if you have a lot of fuzz layers for example if you have um, animal ears on or if you have a fuzzy sweater on um, you might also want to play around with this middle value which basically controls the grays in the image so, um, if you drag it this way, there'll be more black. If you drag it this way, there'll be more white. I'm just going to um, drag it this way a little bit to make a little bit less of it, a little bit more white, which means once we invert it, a little bit less visibility. Um, and then I'm going to press OK. And now I can invert it using Control i And now we're ready to copy it into the mask. So, Control a to select all. Control c to copy. Now I can hide the layer and go to the layer with the avatar on it and create a mask and alt click on that mask and again control A to select the whole canvas and then control shift V to paste in. And now I can control D to deselect and alt click on that mask again to come out of mask view. And now again you can see if I hide the background layer it's just the avatar and again there is no fuzz around the avatar because we were careful with the masking. Um, and again, I will create a solid color background to demonstrate the uh, lack of fuzz. As you can see, it's a very clean alpha. And even her hair isn't really causing too much grief. And the fuzz layer on the ears is, you know, minimally still present because, again, I played around with that gray slider. So now I can delete this and I can reshow the background. And again, I can go to filter. And because I just performed a Gaussian blur, it's here. So I can just recall it and press OK. And now I can crop the image as needed. Oh, 
there we go and enter and now again I can just move the avatar around I prefer turning this layer with the mask into a smart object so that the mask doesn't in any way get affected um you don't have to of course but I tend to so I'm just going to position her how I would like her enter and you know now if for example your background is a bit too light for your liking you can always go in with um, adjustment levels and they will only affect the background and not also the avatar so if I want to add a little bit of contrast here we go and then maybe some levels to just amp up that contrast here we go and there we go so now for example with my wind light it can be a little bit um diffusing in terms of saturation it can sort of kill the saturation of the image a little bit um so the way that i fix this is i above all the visible layers will create a vibrance level uh layer sorry <laughs> And I will just drag this up. Saturation is a little bit extreme, as you can see, so I tend to just leave that at zero. But then the vibrant slider, I will drag up. And you can see that has made a bit of a difference. But it's slightly more natural than with the saturation slider. And so now, very easily, we have created a uh, picture with a fuzzy background and no green screen issues. Um, so yes. I hope that this tutorial was helpful for you, and if you have any suggestions for future tutorials, please leave them in the comments below. And uh, yes, that'll do it for me today, uh, and I hope you have a great week. Bye!